All right, we're going to go ahead and finish this module with lesson 20. And the good news is in this lesson, there's actually no new material coming out. This is going to be sort of taking everything we've learned so far and putting it together. And to do that, I want to start with, again, a little bit of a, of a review. So we'll start with, again, what is the long run aggregate supply curve? It's this vertical curve that we have that indicates our full, full GDP, full employment GDP when our long our short run aggregate supply curve and our aggregate demand curve intersect at long run aggregate supply we have as you can see on the screen what's known as long run equilibrium or full employment that's when our current gdp is the same as our full employment gdp which we label y star and of course we also have our equilibrium price labeled there this is long run equilibrium and full employment. Now we also learn that sometimes we deviate from that. We end up with what's known as a recession and that occurs when our aggregate demand curve is too far to the left. We do not have enough demand for goods and services. In that case we learn that price levels are low but so is our GDP. You can see Y1 is less than Y star and therefore high unemployment is the problem here. What's caused this? A decrease in aggregate demand. The opposite of this problem, the opposite of a recession or below full employment is what's known as an inflationary gap or above full employment and in this case high inflation was our problem. Here aggregate demand is actually shifted too far to the right. Now we have higher price levels which means more inflation. We also have more GDP than what we would produce if we were at the long run equilibrium and therefore we're actually beginning to cut into the natural rate of unemployment which also is not good so high inflation is essentially our problem when we have an inflationary gap and it's caused by too much aggregate demand and of course the thing that economists lose sleep over stagflation is when you have high inflation and high unemployment and as we learned in our last lesson that is when aggregate supply shifts to the left in this case, we have prices that are too high and our GDP that is too low, and therefore we have high levels of inflation and low levels of employment or high levels of unemployment. And again, that's caused by aggregate supply shifting to the left. All right, what we're going to do now is take these concepts and mix it with the lesson we did uh, in lesson 18 where we talked about why supply and demand shift. We're going to start to now try to make this all into one picture. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with an example. Um, in this case the example is the economy begins at full employment and there is a decrease in consumer spending. What I'd like you to do right now is to stop the recording and graphically illustrate this situation the economy beginning at full employment and then what would happen to this economy because there is a decrease in consumer spending. Show any changes in price and our GDP. When you're ready, restart the video and I'll show you the answer. Okay, at this time, hopefully you've had a chance to sketch out this, this example and here's the answer that I came up with. Okay, what do we have going on here? There seems like a lot we would start by drawing our economy at long run equilibrium which would have been where P1 and Y star uh, seem to be labeled on our graph where AS and AD1 intersect at the long run equilibrium but because we had a decrease in consumer spending we notice that aggregate demand shifted to the left and again why did it decrease because remember the first component of, G of aggregate demand is consumption. C, I, G, and N, X, C being consumption. Consumption decreased and so aggregate demand shifted to the left. When that happened, prices decreased and our GDP decreased because prices increased, inflation was lower, but our GDP decreasing meant unemployment is higher. Okay, confirm that you're comfortable with that. Let's try another example. Example two, in this case, the economy again begins at long run equilibrium and there is an increase in the cost of labor. Again, stop the video, sketch out this situation in a graph, and then we'll take a look at the answer together. Okay, let's see how we did. 
All right, so in this case, we have an increase in the cost of production. That's because of the cost of labor. So that's going to affect our supply curve. And our graph looks like that. Again, we start with the blue lines at equilibrium. We see P1 and Y1 would be labeled there. And that was where we wanted to be to start. We then shifted out of equilibrium because of that rise in labor costs. We pushed aggregate supply to the left. Remember, the two things that make aggregate supply shift are when it's more expensive to produce goods, and certainly the cost of labor rising would cause that to happen, and also when people fear, uh, fear inflation. That doesn't apply to this question, but the labor costs rising has caused the supply curve to shift left. Therefore, prices have risen from P1 to P2, and our GDP has decreased from Y1 to Y2. And again, because we've increased our prices, inflation is rising. And because we've decreased our RGDP, unemployment is rising. This is stagflation. All right, let's try another example. In this case, we're going to start below full employment. And then there is an increase in the sale of new houses. But that is not enough to get the economy back to full, full employment. Again, stop the video here and try an example. Okay, let's see how you did. Okay, let's see how you did. All right, what we notice is that we had first our aggregate demand one and our aggregate supply curve. And as we, we mentioned, they were all the way to the left of the aggregate supply curve when it started. Notice our direction said the economy is below full employment to begin. So here we are. Here's our original, there we go, there's our original RGDP, and there's our original price level. Again, both uh, low prices and an RGDP that is to the left of where full employment should be. Then what happened? We had an increase in the sale of houses. Now, we might remember from our lesson on GDP that housing is one of the investment consumption uh, components, excuse me. So that means we're going to have an increase in aggregate demand. That means the aggregate demand curve will shift to the right, thus increasing prices. There's my cursor, prices, and increasing our GDP, which means now inflation will rise and unemployment will decrease. Oh, excuse me. Unemployment will decrease. Having said that, we did make a note that our economy did not go all the way back to full employment in the direction. So it's not quite there, but we're getting closer. And that's the idea of this question. OK, and the last example, example number four, the economy has a situation of stagflation. We're already in stagflation. There is then a decrease in the cost of energy. And the economy does, because of that, reach full employment. What would that look like graphically? Again, stop the video sketch your situation and then we'll we'll uh, look at the answer together okay okay let's take a look at the answer together and here it is okay again in this case uh, aggregate supply one is right here and aggregate demand curve is here so this is our initial starting point we are in stagflation here's our prices are high and we'll notice that our RGDP is well to the left of our long run aggregate supply curve. Therefore, we have stagflation. There is a decrease in the cost of energy. Because that's true, what do we know is happening? We know that the cost of producing things is going to decrease. That will increase the aggregate supply curve. And because of that, we know that prices will decrease and our GDP will increase. And again, that's all as the aggregate supply curve shifts to the right. And because we're coming back to full employment, we're going to shift it all the way back to long run equilibrium. OK, that concludes uh, this lesson and concludes this module. You can go on ahead now and work on your unit exam.